Hi, my name is Jens. I'm the CEO of AIO Robotics, and we are the next generation 3D printer company here in Los Angeles. Let's first have a look at the market. Only 150,000 3D printers got sold worldwide until today, and over the next years, the sales numbers will significantly increase. By 2017, more than a million 3D printers will get sold worldwide. But we have to look at uh, the data and ask us, why did 3D printers not take off yet? And we believe it's because of two reasons. It's because of 3D printers are still too complex to use, and 3D printers are still too expensive. Next slide, please. And this is our solution. We built SUS. SUS is the world's first all-in-one 3D printer. It's a 3D printer with an integrated 3D scanner. And uh, so you can scan, print, copy, and fax. And um, it is also easier to use than all competitor products because all you have to do is pressing one of these pink buttons. Uh, so you can digitize objects. You can 3D print any 3D model files. But you can also 3D copy objects. And what that means is you put a real object into the machine, press the copy button, and within one hour you get a plastic copy of this um, original object. You can um, scale it up, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller with just a few um, um, touches of a button. Um, but um, you can also 3D fax it from one machine into another machine worldwide anywhere. Um, the uh, machine, um, we eliminated all manual calibration. Um, the machine comes ready out of the box. Uh, initial setup time less than 10 minutes. And also, um, um, if you go back to uh, the slide, um, um, this device comes at a significantly lower cost than all competitor products out there. Next slide, please. What are our market verticals? Well, we have three market verticals. The first one is the educational sector, middle schools, high schools, and colleges. The second ones are the professional um, uh, users, the designers, the architects, and the engineers that use our device for prototyping. And then we have the B2B2C market. These are copy stores, um, home improvement markets, and car repair stores. And um, all these uh, target groups together have a market potential of more than a billion dollars just for the United States. Next slide, please. So how do we actually reach out directly to our target customers? Well, this is a world map. Um, and first, we identified our customer hotspots. Then we partnered up with local distributors worldwide. And these hotspots, we connected all these distributors with a handful of global master distributors. And uh, our goal is to sell 1,000 machines. This year, we already sold 140 machines so far. Um, next slide, please. Why do we think we will be successful in the market? Well, we have a very compelling product, the first of its kind, with an excellent performance team of PhD-level engineers. We have a world-class um, OEM manufacturer, LightOn, that is able to produce thousands of machines in a very short time. And we have a very strong advisory board uh, to, to, uh, that helps us to guide um, um, how to scale up our company. Thank right. you. Can you just talk a little bit more about the compelling use cases of where the mass market consumer would need one of these things? I'm struggling with that um, and have been for a couple years now. Okay. Uh, you, you, you talked about it being a compelling case for uh, lower cost, and that's one of the ways that you were win, but you didn't really talk about the cost of the product or the margin on the product and how that changes uh, in scale and the you know, the relationship with the OEM manufacturer and uh, will you be relying on them if you start getting volume? Okay. I appreciate you trying to answer the question, you know, why hasn't it taken off yet? Uh, I'm curious uh, to understand from your perspective whether or not the fact that it takes an hour to print a single thing is still going to be potentially an inhibitor to uh, driving mass adoption. I, th I think the aesthetic of what you're, you're having as a product is pr pretty good and the, the, the appearance of simplicity is also pretty nice. Um, I think there's a market. I would be concerned about patent protection. How defensible is it against some of the large uh, currently existing player? And uh, then also, how do, you, how do you get this up and running? Because the cost of CapEx to go get the first machine will be quite massive probably. And it's, um, that's, that's probably a fairly large race to start with, not half a million, half a million, but it's either you go big or you just walk on. That's my, my view. Just curious about your revenue estimates for the next couple of years. OK, let me answer these questions. First, we start with the use cases. Well, um, 
we know that um, we are in the B2B market and not in the B2C market directly. So we know that 3D printers will not be in households over the next years. Uh, we know that the clear demand is coming from prototyping businesses, from really like uh, professional users that use these devices on a daily basis to prototype um, and to design. So um, uh, my teammates and me, we are from a robotics lab. We use 3D printers on a daily basis to really like prototype parts, customize parts, get them very quickly within like two, three hours, maybe an hour if, if these are smaller parts. So clearly the use cases are in the B2B2, uh, in the B to B business, um, and in the professional use, in the prosumer um, field. The cost of product, well, we are selling it for $2,500 uh, compared to a MakerBot digitizer, a MakerBot 3D scanner, and a MakerBot uh, 3D printer, we are already above $3,600, plus a computer. This device has a high-speed computer integrated, so you will be with a competitive pr product um, above $4,000 easily. Um, when it comes to margins, we partnered up with LightOn. LightOn is a manufacturer that manufactured over 50 million 2D printers in the last decade. They are experts in scaling down the cost, um, and um, we are um, around one third um, of our retail price in the manufacturing cost. Um, the drive um, for mass adoption, well, how are we going to do that? Um, um, what holds it back pretty much? You said um, the printing time. Printing time is definitely one of the hot topics for 3D printing, how to like, increase the, the printing um, um, speed. We have ideas um, um, about like, having a multi-nozzle no system with like, a bigger nozzle, a smaller nozzle, how we can like, combine it um, in a way that um, we increase the printing speed. So this is um, a process that uh, will go on over the next uh, year, uh, two years um, on our side, how to like increase the speed of 3D printing, but that's clearly one other reason that holds back 3D printing, of course. Um, patents, um, yeah, we filed an international patent, so we are protected on that side. However, I think what uh, protects us more is the first mover advantage at this point. We see that a lot of other companies want to enter the space of 3D printing and 3D scanning, but having the skills of having really both technologies combined in one machine is very challenging. Most of the 3D printer companies out there just focus on one field, either 3D printing or 3D scanning, but uh, uh, not both. Was that the full question you had? And revenue, revenue um, Revenue estimations are we want to sell 1,000 machines this year, so roughly with distributor pricing, $2,000 per machine that we sell, um, that would be $2 million this year, and by next year we want to scale up. We want to produce more than 10 million, uh, 10 million in revenue. That would be then 10,000 machines um, at least. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, that's our, our plan. All right, great.